Good morning, and welcome to the uh, final day of Top Solid webinars. Today is April 29th. The sun is hiding, so we have nothing better to do than learn about turning. We're expecting a few more people to log in, so uh, I'll give them just a few seconds here. Uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Bill Gantz. I'm the Sales and Technical Director here at Top Solid USA. I am joined by Joe Hart, our Technical Manager, and Mike Kay, our Sales Manager. During the presentation, if you have any questions, by all means, type them into the question bar and we'll do our best to answer them uh, as quickly as possible. So, as I said, this first webinar is all about what's new in turning for Top Solid Cam 2022. So let's go have a look. Okay, so first uh, four or five items have to do with improvements to the top solid scenario. For those of you not familiar with what the scenario is, it just means you don't deal with multi-channel turning. So the scenario, first of all, is there to help guide you in uh, setting up the synchronizations for all your toolpath. Okay, between channel one, channel two, and so on. So this first improvement has to do with um, the back to tool change position movements. If I zoom up on this stuff here, make it a little easier. We changed these to be yellow and kind of a cross hatched pattern so that you know those are the back to tool change movements. So it's nice and simple. Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, next, we have the tool tips on constraints with an ID number. So what does that mean? If I hover on this and I zoom up, you'll notice now we have an identification on here. Okay. And if we go back to the next one, that's 10, that's eight and so forth. The whole idea here, uh, when hovering the mouse above the constraint, you get the ID number of the constraint. It's just so that you can try to map the constraint to your synchronizations in G code. Um, in order to get these, if you're bringing in a file from 715 or earlier, you do need to do the upgrade command on the document, which of course is located right here. Keep this party going. Six dot three. All right, so the next one has to do with telling you if the constraint was uh, generated manually or automatically. So for example, and again, I'll zoom up, this constraint was generated manually. So when you hover on the constraint, it comes up with our tool tip and it tells you that it was a manual constraint. If I hover on this one, for example, you can see there that it comes up telling you that it was automatically generated. So just helps you identify which were manual constraints, which were automatic constraints. Okay, and then the last one, I'm not gonna, it doesn't matter, we can use the same project. Uh, the last one we'll talk about is the uh, tool tips on operations, including cutting conditions. So uh, this displays based on the type of operation that you're on. So let's zoom up on this. So. If you hover, it displays specific information, spindle speed, durations, whatever. This is an environment activation, so there's quite nothing. If we go to here, this is rough turning, and I'll zoom up on it so we can see. Uh, you can see the operation duration, the step duration, but you can also now see all your cutting conditions. Okay. So again, the idea is we just wanted to give you as much information as we could uh, whenever you're working within the scenario within Top Solid. All right, let's keep on going. Next, uh, we've added a few new choices to delays or uh, dwells inside of Top Solid Turning. Let's go zoom up on something here. We'll go up to roughing. And then we'll go into our operation. And we'll go here to strategy. So whenever you have the delay option, you now have the option to do it based on revolution count 
or time. Before it was only time, but now you can do revolution count. Uh, if you're using revolution count, it will still be converted to seconds anyway. It just, we do the calculation for you, okay? The new option is included in uh, turn roughing, groove roughing, grooving, parting off, okay? Almost, uh, I wanna say almost everywhere that you have a dwell option for turning. Ooh. Next, steady rests. A nice new option has been added with regards to programming a steady rest. Uh, first and foremost, let's go into here. You now have access to cutting conditions. Why? Many steady rests have the ability to have coolant coming out of the steady rest. So the only way to turn on the coolant in the steady rest is to give you cutting conditions for the steady rest. So like that, you now have access to uh, setting the spindle speed. You can also set what type of coolant you want. Okay. As well, in the operation itself, you can specify which direction the spindle is rotating. Awesome. Keep on going. All right, this next one I think is quite a nice improvement. Let's start with a little preview of it, and then we'll show you how it all works. Uh, we've added the support of being able to turn in the Y, Z plane. What do I mean? Well, for example, let's just start with all of these first operations here, okay? Oop, let me slow down a little bit. Yeah, it's going too fast, sorry. Rewind and start again. So here we're using a technology called Free Turn uh, by Siratizit or something like that. So this tool you can see, we can turn on many different driven points of the tool. So to start with, I'm turning down and this is in the Y axis if you pay attention, okay? Turning down the face. Now watch, I'm gonna index. And now I'm gonna turn down the length. Again, just to show you, this is all happening in Y. Okay. The advantage of this, if you're not familiar with this type of technology, is you don't run out of, or you don't run into collisions with your B-axis head as easily. Okay. So let's keep going. We're gonna zoom on past that so we can get to the next part of the roughing. Again, now we're gonna index. We'll do a little bit more roughing like so. We'll index again. And we'll continue roughing. So uh, another advantage of this is tool changes, right? I didn't have to do any tool changes whatsoever. So I did all those operations with one tool. Now, how does it work? Let's give it a go. Alrighty, so. Turning is turning, as you all know. So if I go in and start roughing, Turn on my tool so that I can see. Right now we have standard tool, so I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna go choose tool 110 instead. What you'll notice right off the bat about tool 110, we have to choose the driven point that we want, right? So I'm gonna go into my cutting conditions and here I'm gonna choose point three. Then we're gonna go set our WCS solution. We're gonna go create a new one and we're gonna set the A axis to 20 degrees. Okay, now we have the tool oriented how we want. We can set our depth of cut to be a little bit bigger, why not? Because we're using the whole side of the insert there. Off you go. And if we run the simulation on this, bring it over, just like we saw in the first sample, okay? Now, I wanna rough from here to here. Again, just like you're used to. 
The significant difference in this case is we're going to change the driven point again. So this time I'm going to go up to my cutting conditions. We'll go to gauges. This time I'm going to go switch to driven point two. Okay. And then I'm going to set my angle to minus 110. So now you can see the orientation of the tool. Again, take a nice heavy bite. Off we go. And if we look at all of this through simulation again, let's get this thing up there. You'll see the link movement handles the orientation just fine. Yes, it requires an update to the machine def. We have to tell the machine def your machine allows uh, YZ turning, okay? And you have to check with your manufacturer as well to make sure your machine allows YZ turning. Is there a wizard for this kind of tool? Um, honestly, it's just a standard tool definition. It's about frame orientation. So we will create a document. Uh, I think there's one created already on how to define a tool like this and make sure your frames are all oriented the correct way. All right, so let's continue roughing really quick. Again, I'm gonna go from here. Oh, we'll go to, to this thing right here, why not? I'm gonna do roughing again. And now this time, I wanna turn on pocket plunge, okay? I'm going to switch to driven point three. Oh, let me turn on my tool so we can see what we're doing. So I'm gonna to switch to driven point three. Perfect. We'll go set an angle. The angle that I wanna use for this one is gonna be minus 20. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to show you that in this first version of this, you can see we're getting collisions. It's not checking that insert back there. So you're gonna to have to manually trim this tool path yourself. But again, no big deal on top solid. We can just go to here, we're gonna limit in Z. We'll go to a point. We'll set this point here, why not? And maybe four millimeters. That looks good. Now we have that roughed out. And then we'll do one final roughing. And we're gonna to switch to driven point one in this case. That's the tip of the tool. And we'll set the angle in this case to 120. Like so. Make sure you have pocket plunge turned on. And again, it's a great example of just showing how you can use these tools, how quickly you can move around, how effortlessly it is to do. And then finally, we'll do the fun part, which everybody wants to do. I'm just going to do it all in one shot because why not? We'll turn on our pocket plunge. Let's make sure our B angle or our angle is correct. Yep, we want 120. Perfect. Let's go turn on pocket plunge, four millimeters. And what I'm doing here, by the way, for those of you not familiar with pocket plunge, See right here, that tool would dip in there and we're gonna be doing a live B-axis turning or live this spindle axis turning right now. And dipping the tool in there doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna say the gap has to be at least four millimeters for me to plunge into. Perfect. We're gonna turn on constant cutting angles as well. We'll click okay. Now, if we watch this one to start with, you can see it's not uh, ideal yet. So it's trying to do its thing, but we're gonna to need to give it some help. So that's where you have optimization and you can edit normals. So for example, I may start by deleting that normal. I may start by deleting this normal. And then I'm gonna say, come on out like that. It will be a little bit up like that. You can be vertical. Those are all fine. And then these over here, we just wanna be tilted more like so. And I like it. Now, if we simulate, slow it down so you can see. Again, one tool for everything. So, 
Again, I think this one is a really, really awesome improvement. And I look forward to working with all you guys on your VXS machines or machines that support this type of tool. Alrighty, let's keep going. Don't get ahead of yourself, John. And the answer is no. All right, next, we have brought forth interpolated turning. Okay. Uh, but for you, John, I'm going to charge double. Okay. Uh, so interpolated turning, this is, uh, again, your machine has to support this. You can't magically make your machine support this with a creative post processor. You have to have uh, the ability uh, to do this. So, uh, hold on, I have a restriction. You must have a programmable spindle for the tool. The machine must support turning tools in this specific spindle. Okay. All right. So what does it do? Let's just watch a simulation. So we're on a mill, what looks like a mill, but yet we're doing turning. So this is interpolated turning. It's pretty awesome and it's pretty simple. The way it works, again, we have to define the machine to support turning, obviously. But you go to roughing, we're going to pick our tool, we'll pick this tool, that's perfect. Preview it so you can see. Um, we need to activate the multi axis option for turning. And here we're going to do interpolated turning. Okay? When we do interpolated turning, we have to choose the axis that's driving the tool. Awesome. Just click OK. Now, when we watch this, based on my direction, that's starting from the inside and working its way out. Okay? If you want to work from the outside in, look your direction like you would. On a lathe. Now, notice how my turning tool is right now. If you want the tool oriented the other way, then you simply do opposite axis work. And there you go. Okay, I'll show you guys a few other samples of this. One other sample anyway. So. Here we're on a five axis head head machine. And now we're going to do some fun little turning. Okay. So again, very cool new feature in top solid seven for this year. All right, so one of you asked about prime turning because you read ahead and saw that prime turning is in here. Uh, prime turning is officially an option in Top Solid now. Uh, it's really, really hard to use, guys. And by really hard, um, definitely want to have the right tool for it. And then you go into your settings, you go to strategy, and you activate prime turning. That's it, okay? Then you have the ability to use the dynamic entry radius, um, what your maximum angle is, of course, we have to plug Sandvik because it's their technology. And off you go. And if you're not familiar with prime turning, using the whole back side of that insert to rough with. Okay. So the, I should point this out really quick. The dynamic entry radius adapts the size of the radius automatically based on the uh, pass depth, okay? So realistically leave this on, set your depth to cut. You don't ever have to worry about setting this value. Okay, perfect. Uh-oh. John, I think I spoke too soon. 
Prime turning, I believe, is an add-on module. I didn't uh, didn't realize that. We'll find out information on that and uh, let you guys all know. All right, let's keep going. Again, we added some uh, additional information for managing steadies and uh, steady rests mounted on turrets, as well as delays in steady rests and tail stops. Okay, so if we go to the steady rest, and we go to our settings. Again, you have your opening delay, close delay, and you have the ability to do it based on uh, time or revolution count. And then as well, which one is this? One I want. That Sorry. And as well, you now have the ability to support both steady rests and tail stocks on turrets. Okay. So if we go here, we have our steady accessory movement, right? So you can see, boom, it's supported. And it's just using the standard steady movement so you're driving by steady okay and then if we do the same thing with tail stock you can see you're driving your tail stock so before we had to use virtual jogs for those two objects now they're supported by the tail stock and steady command all righty let's keep going two more points i believe All right, so a new, uh, with turning, there's a new stock escape command. A new checkbox to request adaptation to the stock on finishing operations and turning has been added to adjust the lead-in and lead-outs to stock automatically. So if we go to here, for example, no, probably not that one. This is a great sample they left me with. Anyway. It's right here. So you have the stock escape command. Let's see if I can rearrange things here. Have something a little bit more exciting. Nope, they gave us a, a silly sample for this one. Well, this one will work. Here. So if I go to finishing, normally, if you are gonna finish this face first before you rough that face, you'd have to manually adjust that. So now we can go to lead in, lead out, go to our out, and say stock escape, and now it's adjusting automatically. Okay. And then finally, so, this one had to do with cycles. I'm just gonna bring over my cheat sheet here because I think it'll make more sense. So, um, problem related to the offset. We had problems when you had some complex profiles when you're outputting uh, your cycle for roughing. So, the moral of the story here is that is now uh, improved. Plus, you have the ability to define and use cylindrical stock in your output as well. So you can force the stock to be like that, even if the stock is really like this, okay? And the main reason for that is on some machines, uh, those cycles don't support custom stock and it throws it off. So you need to tell it to do a regular cylindrical stock, okay? And I believe that's it. So does anyone, <laughs> it's an add-on in Georgia only, I like that. Um, with that, that's the end of the what's new in turning. Does anyone have any questions that haven't been answered yet? If not, the next webinar will begin at 11 a.m. 
and uh, it will be covering some additional improvements. There's three more webinars to go with regards to Top Solid Cam today, so uh, we'll see all of you at 11 a.m. then. Have a good morning.